the Cyber Hub Bunker in studio. You're tuning in to the Cyber Hub Podcast. And now for your host and CISO, James Azar. Good, good morning, security gang. Happy Monday and welcome to another exciting show of the Cyber Hub Podcast, January 8th, 2024. Thank you all for being here. I hope the first weekend of 2024 was a restful and successful one because we've got a lot to talk about on this morning's show. So we're going to get right into that here in just a moment. But before we do, if you haven't subscribed to our podcast, please make sure to do so. Go follow us on Substack. When you subscribe and become a paid supporter uh, of the show on Substack, we send you one of these awesome travel espresso mugs. They're amazing. I'm going to be using it today as I've got to drive ahead of me because for the rest of this week we'll be recording from somewhere very very special can't wait to share all of that with y'all uh tomorrow so without further ado join me for our traditional morning get going i've got cheers y'all my double espresso nothing like a good espresso on a monday morning right like a good cup of coffee let's go ahead and get started with uh, an additional mortgage lender uh, suffering and falling victim to a cyber attack. This time, it's Loan Depot, who's had to take its IT systems offline, uh, preventing people from being able to make payments against their mortgages. Loan Depot is one of the largest non-bank retail mortgages lenders in the U.S. It employs approximately 6,000 people. It services loans of over $140 billion. Yesterday, customers began experiencing issues when trying to log into the payment portal to pay their mortgage or even trying to contact them by phone some customers took to took to x formerly twitter uh to find out what was causing the outage uh loan depot was pretty straightforward which will be a tale here in just a moment um as loan depot said they're experiencing a cyber incident that's affecting their phone lines they're working to uh, return to normal business operations as soon as possible and they apologize for the inconvenience. The company confirmed that they suffered a cyber attack and they're working with law enforcement and forensics uh, experts to investigate the incident. Uh, they've taken certain systems offline. So they're working diligently to restore normal business operations. Uh, the company has retained a leading forensic aid, kind of the traditional mumbo jumbo. If you're seeking to make a payment, you may do so through the contact center by speaking with an agent and they've set up a phone number and a 12 hour call center that's set up from 7 a.m. Central Time to 7 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. If this was ransomware. It'll be interesting to see what kind of data was stolen. But if it wasn't, uh, it'll be even more interesting what was going on there. Now, Loan Depot took responsibility, but 23andMe are just absolutely shameful. Shame on 23andMe. I rarely go after a victim, rarely, but 23andMe left me no choice. I am disgusted by their approach to their data breach. So TechCrunch broke this story. Uh, I'm doing the kind of follow-up from dark reading. The TechCrunch one was very legal mumbo jumbo. This one's a little bit more cyber related. Um, so apparently 23andMe is accusing some of their customers of be using commonly used passwords. And so it's not really their fault. It's not 23andMe's fault that they got breached. It's the users. That makes sense. Remind me that one. Remind me that one again. Um, everyone should know better than to use an un, unhygienic credential but at the same time the organization that provides the service ought to have capabilities to limit that risk that's steve moore the vp and chief security strategist at exabeam he's not wrong the user group that's suing 23andme is arguing that the company violated the cpra and the cmia and the illinois genetic information privacy act the gipa and committed a number of common law violations the first point the lawyers uh, explained is user negligently recycled and failed to update their passwords. Who did they hire as their lawyers and fire them now? That's not going to work. You're not going to be able to pass the buck down the road, 23andMe. Um, this is re absolutely uh, <laughs> fascinating and ridiculous. These are the people who wanted you to trust them with their DNA, folks. 
that's the amount of responsibility um, they are taking on themselves. That's 23 and me. So when credentials leak, by the way, the person who's mostly responsible for them is the company. And any company with a cyber program that hosts banking data, medical data, if you don't have a threat intelligence program that's actually monitoring leaked credentials online, you're missing the point of your cybersecurity program. If you don't have a good external password policy that says you can't use password 321 or you can't use password 123, you've got to use a combination of things, then you're responsible. And at the end of the day, you're providing a service. You are responsible for that. 23andMe hasn't gotten that memo. They're trying to pass the buck over to their users. A campaign that delivered an async RAT malware to select targets has been active for at least 11 months. They're using hundreds of unique loader samples in more than 100 domains. This is specifically targeting critical infrastructure. According to Microsoft researchers, uh, Yiga Litsky, who spotted the attacks, uh, delivered over hijacked email threads last summer, but couldn't retrieve the final payload. at and alien labs team of, of researchers noticed a spike in phishing emails targeting specific individuals in certain companies and started to investigate. The attacks begins with a malicious email carrying a GIF attachment that leads to an SVG file that download an obfuscated JavaScript and PowerShell script. After passing some anti-sandbox checks, the loader communicates with a C2 server and determines if the victim is eligible for the async RAT infection. The hard-coded C2 domains are hosted on BitLaunch, a service that allows anonymous payments in crypto. Uh, if the loader determines that it's um, that it runs in an analysis environment, it deploys decoy payloads, likely in an attempt to mislead security researchers and threat detection tools. The anti-sandboxing employed by the lo- uh, employed by the loader involves a series of verifications performed via PowerShell. So, AT and T determined that the threat actor used 300 unique samples of loaders in the past 11 months. Uh, each with minor altercation, uh, alterations sorry, in the code structure, obfuscation, and variable names and values. Another observation is the use of domain generation algorithm that generates new C2 domains every Sunday, so it's constantly changing. Some uh, are registered with uh, nissing.net using South Africa for the country code. Uh, some are hosted on DigitalOcean and many, many others. So a specific and, and very complex threat work there that's obviously not someone who's um, uh, playing around. That's likely very, very uh, skilled group. Merck has finally settled with insurers who denied its $700 million Nod Petya claim back from 2017. It took them nearly seven years to resolve this. The undisclosed settlement, first reported by Bloomberg Law, is the culmination of years long of court battle that has attracted attention from the cybersecurity and insurance industries because of the implications for defining what constitutes an act of war in the cyber context, Merck was denied nearly $700 million in coverage by its insurers, insurers because of a clause waiving insurer responsibilities for act of war, which is what they tried to say not Petia was. However, the, this kind of went through court, and now it's been settled. Uh, the settlement has not been made public, but we'll be curious to see what that is. On the vulnerability front, Ivanti on Thursday of last week warned of a critical severity vulnerability in its endpoint manager uh, product that could be exploited for RCE. This is CVE 2023 39 or 336. The issue is described as an SQL injection bug that could allow an attacker that has access to the internal network to execute arbitrary SQL queries and retrieve output without the need for authentication. Successful exploitation of the vulnerability. Avanti notes in its advisory could allow an attacker to take over devices running the EPM agent. Uh, that's been obviously patched with uh, up service update four and all prior versions. Now service update five resolves that bug. So there's that as well. In geopolitical cyber news, we move to northern Israel, the border with Lebanon, where yesterday a group of uh, Arab Christian hackers, a hardline Christian group, I don't know what a hardline Christian group is, uh, dubbed Soldiers of God. Uh, Lebanon was a predominantly Christian Arab nation uh, before the Palestinians went there in the 60s and 70s and turned it into what it is today. Um, information displayed screens at the Beirut airport were hacked 
uh, as well as some of the luggage uh, uh, systems and uh, OT systems at the airport as clashes between Hezbollah and Israel intensify, uh, leading closer to an all-out war, um, and the Lebanese people aren't having it. They don't want to be uh, proxies for Hezbollah or Iran. The screens to play the message with a logo of the children of God, uh, soldiers of God, sorry, which garnered attention over the past year for its campaigns against the LGBTQ community in Lebanon, and a little-known group that calls itself the one who spoke in a video statement that denied its involvement, while other groups shared the screens on social media. It said, Hassan Nasrallah, who's the leader of Hezbollah, you will no longer have supporters if you curse Lebanon with a war for which you will bear responsibility and consequences, echoing a more sentiment in uh, Lebanon over not wanting to get involved in the war with Israel uh, because of Gaza. In other news, the security service of the Ukraine announced this week that it had taken down two residential surveillance cameras that were hacked by the Russians and abused to spy on air defense systems and critical infrastructure in the city of Kiev. One of the cameras was located in a balcony and was used by its owner for monitoring the surrounding area of an apartment building. Russian threat actors remotely took control of the device, configured it to stream to capt the captured video to YouTube. The second camera was set up by its owner to monitor the car park of a residential complex. Then, again, Russian hackers took control of the camera, which gave them visual, visual information on the surrounding area. Both of those were either air defense systems or critical infrastructure facilities. Uh, they believe that they were used in the January 2nd missile attack on Kiev as a way to pinpoint uh, what to hit. Um, so uh, not surprising there. And the final story of the day. We welcome the Marine Corps Major General Lorna Malak, who will assume command of the Cyber National Mission Force, the CNMF, during a change of command at Fort Meade, Maryland on Friday. This leadership change has been long overdue. It's actually been held up in the Senate uh, um, for a slew of reasons. So Major General William Hartman, who led the force since 2019, is Cyber Command's new deputy chief and we'll be working with the uh, 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 great General Nakasone there, um, and uh, Major General Lorna Malak will assume responsibilities on January 16th, according to a command spokesperson. Um, so Malak, who was born in Jamaica, immigrated to the United States as a teenager before enlisting in the military just three months after arriving in the country, has been the front runner, so we're happy to see her uh, to achieve this rank of a brigadier general. She's the first African-American woman to achieve the rank of brigadier general in the Marine Corps and the first female chief information officer. She most recently served as the first military deputy director for combat support for the National Security Agency Cybersecurity Director. The organization was created four years ago and has around 3,700 personnel, including 3,100 civilians. So uh, Malak, who sources said had been backing the outgoing cyber command and NSA chief army, General Pon, Paul Nokasomi inherits a digital war fighting corp whose mission is at the forefront of U.S. efforts against foreign adversaries online. Her success is our success as a nation. We wish her the best of luck in her new role, and hopefully we'll start to see our cyber command really take front and center. That's it for our show this morning. We'll be back tomorrow, 9 a.m. Eastern, live right here with all the latest and greatest. Until then. Have a great rest of your day, y'all, and most importantly, stay cyber safe. We love feedback, so make sure to connect with us on social media and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast listening platform.